Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this session, we will cover uh, Shia inheritance law. There are numerous similarities and differences between Sunni and Shia inheritance law. We will first of all look into the salient features of Shia inheritance law. Similar to Sunni inheritance law, Shia inheritance law. Shia inheritance law uh, recognizes sharers and residuaries, but unlike Sunni inheritance law, Shia inheritance law does not have the third category of distant kinder. There are nine sharers in Shia law against 13 under Sunni law. Grandparents and son's daughter are not regarded as sharers. Shia law does not regard uh, recognize the third category of legal heirs, that is distant kinder. And in addition to sharers and residuary, Shia law categorizes legal heirs into three main classes. Rule uh, or principle of all is not applied in Shia law. Principle of representation is applied for distribution amongst distant layers of relatives. I shall explain it in a bit. Extramarital children or so-called illegitimate children do not inherit from either parent under Shia law. Under Sunni law, such children inherit from uh, the mother and maternal relatives. Generally, Shia law is more gender sensitive than Sunni law. Sunni law prefers agnates related to through male ancestors. Shia law prefers the nearest kin, whether male or female. There are two types of legal heirs, either they are based on consanguity and then they are divided into uh, three classes. And the second uh, heirs who are based on marriage, that is spouse. Classification of heirs by consanguity, there is class one, which includes parents and children, male and female, and children of male, female descendants, how low soever. Class two includes grandparents, true or false, how high soever, and brothers and sisters, full, consanguine, and uterine, and their descendants, how low soever, irrespective of their gender, either they are male or female. Class three, paternal uncles and aunts, maternal uncles and aunts of the deceased, and his or her parents and grandparents, how high soever, and their descendants. Spouse, they are never excluded, just like uh, Sunni law. So a spouse is never excluded from inheriting. Husband gets one uh, half with, uh, when there are no children and one fourth when there are children. Wife gets one fourth when there are uh, no children and one eighth when there are children. Um, what are the principles of distribution? Legal heirs of class one exclude legal heirs of class two and legal heirs of class two exclude legal heirs of class three. <coughs> legal heirs of the same class are entitled irrespective of their gender, except that the male will have double the share than that of a similarly placed female. That is similar in Sunni inheritance law or Hanafi inheritance law to be very specific. <coughs> For example, no distinction between true and false uh, grandparents. So the difference between true and grand uh, false uh, and, and then false grandparent is that true grandparent are the parent between whom there is no female relative. Uh, dada, dadi, false grandparents are the ones where there is fe uh, female relationship um, uh, in between them. So these are nana, nani. Sons, children, and daughters, children, and um, brothers, children, and sisters, children. Female legal heirs located in class one will exclude a male heir uh, situated in classes two and three, despite the fact that he is regarded as residuary. Daughter deprives grandfather, brothers, and uncles. So this is the distinction between Sunni and Shia inheritance law. Here are some examples to clarify uh, these principles. Suppose somebody died, left behind daughter's son. 
father's mother and full brother. Daughter's son take entire share under Shia law as she belongs to class one. Under Sunni law, however, daughter's son is excluded because she is a distant kindred, but father's mother takes one a sixth as a sharer and full brother gets a uh, lion's share that is five sixths as a residue. So when applied in certain circumstances, there are clear distinctions um, between Sunni and Shia inheritance law. Principle of exclusion. Basic premise of the principle is shared by both Sunni and Shia uh, inheritance laws, but there are differences in their application. Female legal heir, nearer in degree, exclude male um, uh, heir who's, remu uh, who's remote in degree. For instance, daughter excludes son's son, though both belong to the same class because daughter is closer than son's son, pota jo hota hai, beti jo hai, wo pote se zyada karibi hai. Female legal heirs more closely related to disease exclude remotely related male legal heirs. So full sister exclude consanguine brother. So irrespective of your gender, whether you're male or female, the closer will exclude the remote. Inheritance of spouse, they are never excluded. Shares of spouse depend on both Shia and uh, Sunni laws on presence or absence of children. Spouse are not entitled to any share under the principle of brad in presence of any other sharer. If somebody leaves a uh, widow and a daughter, widow takes one eighth and the rest goes to the daughter, seven eighth. Childless widow is not entitled to any share in immovable property, that is land, though she is awarded her prescribed share in movable property under Shia law. But in Khalda Shamim Akhtar versus uh, Walam Jafar, uh, Lahore High Court held that a childless widow of a Shia deceased is entitled to her share of the land. So here, one point, uh, important point to be borne in mind is that wife's own personal law does not really matter. What matters is the law of the person whose property is subject to inheritance. So here we are talking about a childless widow of a Shia diseased. This, uh, th this case was appealed before the Supreme Court and it has been pending adjudication. Lahore High Court had recommended that legislation should be done on that point. A legislative proposal was presented before the National Assembly in Pakistan, but it was not passed. So keep your eyes for um, uh, open for this issue because it may uh, be decided in one way or the other. Supreme Court judgment or any legislation will make a big difference. This issue remains unresolved in Pakistan. Principle of representation. Distant legal heirs inherit through their pre-disease connecting link from diseased. Son's children through son, daughter's children through daughter, brother's children through brother, uncle's children through uh, uncle. How does this work? Such legal heirs do not inherit per capita in their own right, as if they are entitled personally. Rather, they take the share of their parents through whom they are inheriting. They inherit what is called per sterpes, as if they are representatives of their pre-disease parent or connecting link. For instance, son's daughter and daughter's son are the legal heirs. They inherit the respective share of their parents that is two into one. So daughter's son's daughter takes two share and daughter's son take one share because they are not inheriting in their own right, but they are inheriting as representatives of their parents. So son's daughter will get two share and daughter's son will get one share because there is legal principle that that, that male gets double the share of female, generally. One grandson from one son and two grandsons from another son, the former, one grandson gets one half 
and the other half is divided between the later two grandsons because they inherit their father's share, not in their own right. This is the rule of representation. This is applied in Shia law. It is not applied under Hanafi law or Sunni law. The principle applies to both descendants and ascendants. Thus, grandparents take the portion of great grandparents take the portion of grandparents. This principle applied to descendants of daughters, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, grand uncles, and grand aunts. Principle of Rad or return. Its application is more frequent in Shia law than in Sunni law, which adversely affects residues. Whoever, uh, whenever there are legal heirs belonging to more than one classes, only legal heirs belonging to superior class will inherit the estate as per their prescribed shares. And in case the entire estate is not consumed, they will also share under the principle of Rad, under Shia law. How does this work? Let's look into some examples. Daughter and paternal uncle are the legal heirs. Under Shia law, daughter belongs to class one and paternal uncle belongs to class three. Hence, daughter excludes paternal uncle and takes the entire share. Under Sunni law, daughter takes one half as a sharer and paternal uncle takes the other half as residuary. Let's take another example. Somebody died and left behind father and daughter. Under Shia law, father takes one sixth and a daughter takes uh, one half. LCM uh, of two and six uh, is six. In this way, father gets one sixth and daughter get uh, uh, three six. Now, if we divide it, the uh, allocated shares are six, but the actual share uh, allocated uh, shares uh, are six, but the actual allocated shares are four, but the actual shares are six. So the two shares would be uh, uh, divided between uh, father and daughter. In this way, we'll simply um, uh, decrease the uh, uh, actual shares. So we will give one four to father and three four to, to daughter. Under Sunni law, daughter gets one half and father gets the other half as a residuary. Rule of all or principle of all is not applied under Shia law. What Shia jurists have done that they, they divide legal heirs into two classes. Legal heirs whose shares are subject to reduction, such as daughter or sister, and legal heirs whose shares are not subject to any reduction, such as parent, spouse, and uterine brother or sister. The entire burden of reduction is put upon the first category and the second category of legal heirs take their prescribed shares. Here are the examples. Somebody died and left behind husband and two sisters. Under Sunni law, husband gets one half because there are no children and sisters get two third. If we divide, so the LCM of two and three is six. Uh, husband will get three six and sisters will get four six. So the allocated share is seven, but the actual shares are six. This is an issue of all. So there is a reduction. We will have to reduce the, the, the shares. How we will do it that we will just divide the reduction uh, equally. So husband will get three, seven and sisters will get three, seven. Under Shia law, husband uh, share will remain three, six. And the four, six share of sisters would be reduced to three six because husband share is fixed and it is not susceptible or subject to change. So Shia law, unlike Sunni law, is uh, very simple and uh, straightforward. So uh, in our next session, we will see that how Shia and Sunni laws are applied in different situations and how their application gives us completely different results but it does not happen all the time. There are numerous examples where Shia and Sunni law are very similar. 
difference only comes where female relatives are involved. 